There was success for the ruling parties in Germany, France and Italy. But as here, the turnout was terrible, the lowest since direct elections for the parliament began 30 years ago. Our Europe editor Mark Mardell reports. Who's full of fizz and who's feeling a bit flat after these elections where more than 160 million people in 27 different countries voted? The Greens did well in many places, celebrating with champagne and an over-enthusiastic group hug. A right-wing anti-immigration nationalist party did well in Hungary and similar parties gained seats in Austria and the Netherlands. In Sweden, the Pirate Party surprised even themselves by winning a seat. They argue not for swashbuckling and timber shivering, but free file sharing on the internet. This election is the classic tale of the dog that didn't bark, or rather the electorate that didn't bite, even in the teeth of an economic crisis. Instead of the knife going in, it ended up cutting slices of celebratory cake for the centre-right. In the big European countries where they're in power, the voters appear to have given them the thumbs up. In France, President Sarkozy has been unpopular, but he's crushed the opposition. In Italy, Silvia Berlusconi's new party won through, despite tales of scandal. In Germany, Angela Merkel shares power with the Social Democrats and beat them. And in Poland, the centre-right rejoiced too. Prime Minister Donald Tusk says, we didn't get a yellow card, what we got was a new vote of confidence. The right didn't clean up everywhere. The left did well in Greece, for instance. But on the whole, it was a night that gave Social Democrats a shock. Their arguments for tighter financial controls, more social protection, didn't pull in the voters. We have a massive economic crisis. We have not got a good result, but we'll use our votes for maximum influences to the benefit of these people out there who need jobs. But as they clear away the debris of election night, one disappointment is clear. Turnout has dropped at every European election since they began 30 years ago. Despite the EU spending £18 million on trying to persuade people to vote, turnout dropped again. To many people, elections to this place just don't matter. Mark Mardell, BBC News, Brussels. And you can find all the results of those elections on our news website. That's at bbc.co.uk slash elections09. Now, I'll be back with the latest from that Labour Party meeting a little later, but now here's Emily Maitlis with the rest of today's news. George, thanks very much. The leader of the Real IRA and three other men have been found responsible for the deaths of 29 people in the OMA bombing in August of 1998. The decision was made by a judge in a civil case brought by the victims' families. He awarded them £1.6 million in damages. June Kelly is in OMA for us now. June. Thanks, Emily. Well, the victims of Omar are remembered here in this garden of light. There's a mirror for each of them. This really has been a momentous day for this market town. In this civil action, the families and their lawyers battled for nearly a decade. It was the worst atrocity in 30 years of the Troubles. Dissident Republicans from the real IRA were responsible. This was their answer to the peace process. Today, the families of some of their victims succeeded where the criminal justice system had failed. I think we have sent a message to terrorists that, you know, from now on, you, you don't only need to worry about the authorities. The families, the families of those victims will come after you. And a message to governments that if you do not do it, we will do it. Like Michael Gallagher, Victor Barker also lost a son in Omer. All we can say is we are delighted and proud on behalf of all those people that died on the 15th of August 1998 to be here today. The bombers murdered 29 and unborn twins. Six families fought this case.